in the UK, trade associations play a particularly important role of helping to bring the industry together in a way that facilitates them doing more business with each other, learning from each other, and, and ultimately working out how to shape the future so that when you get there, it's, it's working well for everyone. So 15 years ago, when payments was very much seen as a back office sector uh, and industry, we recognized that there was a need to create a trade association dedicated to the payments industry. And that's what we did. We set this up. Initially, there were half a dozen members. There's now over 200. They're from across the payments value chain, from the banks and the payment schemes, and licensed e-money and payment institutions, and others regulated. And then lots of fintechs, lots of advisors, and lots of other participants to really make this a holistic, um, engaging, very exciting, and very um, enthusiastic bunch of passionate payments people working together as members of ours to make the world a better place through payments. Our industry is overburdened with too much stuff to do. Uh, it's matured and created a really good payments uh, uh, industry and payment services provided for consumers and businesses and government. But it's kind of, I think, lost its way a little bit. Um, in the last five or six years, um, we perhaps have relied upon um, uh, the, 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 the pure market-making capability of an industry to get it right. Um, and the reality is, we haven't. So, some exciting things are happening, following a, a really great initiative from the UK government's Chancellor of Exchequer last summer. We, we initiated a review uh, through Joe Garner, who is a very experienced uh, ex-CEO uh, and industry leader to undertake an independent report, which he published last uh, December. And out of that, it was recognized as the need for the government to play a, a role as a leader of our industry, which is quite unusual. Quite often we are allowing, we, are, we allow um, industries just to evolve. In this case, we see the need for some clear tracks, some clear outcomes, and some clear criteria to help us decide what to do. And then to use the support of the government to direct the regulator to enable the industry to do what we need to take our, our performance into the next generation. I'm very confident that's going to happen. There's going to be a great deal of change in the next three to five years. Um, and with the government support and with the uh, regulators' uh, participation, I'm confident that the, uh, the industry here will continue to thrive. So when I think of artificial intelligence, I find myself thinking a little bit about um, uh, the buzzword of the moment. And every industry has its particular concerns at a particular time. Um, artificial intelligence is slightly different in that it really has a material impact on not only the way in which we are um, helping our customers to use our payments capabilities more efficiently, but also potentially enabling the, the criminals to abuse their access to and influence over how people pay and get paid. So AI is both, as everybody always says, it's both a blessing and a curse. Um, I ultimately have every confidence that humanity will learn how to leverage and control this phenomenal change uh, that is taking place, and that the, and that the payments industry is going to be a beneficiary of AI and and something and, 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 and able to use it, no, able to get the customers and consumers to use it in a way that's good for them. Quite how, that's what's so exciting. And that's what we're spending a lot of time at this conference talking about is how can we ensure we can leverage the upside of, of AI without um, enabling any of its downside to be uh, experienced.